Hello friends, today I'm going to get you through a question in a computer studies paper 1 exam. Now the question is, study the pseudocode below and use it to draw a flowchart that will represent it in all aspects. That question is uh, an elementary programming principles question. This is uh, the topic that is in uh, form 3 of high school and uh, it is uh, usually question number 16 in uh, the paper 1 of computer studies. Another aspect of it is that it is a compulsory question so all candidates are expected to attempt this question. The whole question number 16 usually covers or has a total of 15 marks. Now here, I'm only interested in this part, that is uh, question number, f uh, Roman number 4. There are other questions before it, but today I want us to look at how we can convert from a pseudocode to a flowchart. Now all candidates having uh, taken this unit or topic are expected to have certain knowledge to do with programming that can help you to answer this question. The first one is that because we are asked to convert into a flowchart, the candidate is expected to have the knowledge of flowchart symbols, program flowchart symbols. Just to go over them quickly, we have the ellipse for start and stop. We have a parallelogram for input and output. There is a rectangle for processing. We have a diamond for conditions or selection. We have a circle for a connector. And lastly, we have an arrow that shows the direction of flow. Those are the basic program flowchart symbols. Ellipse for start and stop. Parallelogram for input and output. The rectangle is for processes. The diamond symbol is for the decisions or conditions. The circle is for connector and you have the arrow to show or to indicate the direction of flow of logic. Now, after we read the question, we need to go through our pseudocode, understand it. That is to study the pseudocode. We need to understand it. And there are several things we need to understand from the pseudocode for us to be able to come up with a flowchart. The first thing we need to understand is we need to identify the inputs, outputs, processes, uh, decisions, and etc. And then number two, we need to understand control structures. We need to look at the control structures used so that we are able to come up with our flowchart. Now going through the pseudocode, we go through the pseudocode line by line as we identify the inputs, outputs, processes, decisions, etc. as well as identifying the control structures that have been used. So start is obviously, obviously start. Count is equal to 1 is a process. How do we know? Whenever you see an equal sign, then that statement is a processing statement. Now processing statements are generally either assignment statements where a value is being given to a variable and number two, a calculation or computation where we are doing operations, arithmetic operations, and then we store the result of the operation in a variable. So in both cases, you will meet the equal sign. And in that case, that is a process. So average is equal to zero is also a process. And line number four, for count equals one to five, 
do. That is an opening statement for a for loop. So when we are using the looping control structures, one of them is the for loop. The for loop is a began or initialized using the statement for count equals one to five do. So that means we already have identified one of the control structures in our pseudocode to be we have a loop and that loop is a for loop. Now our for loop begins with for count equals one to five do and it has to end with end for. So we need to go through our pseudocode and identify the point at which this uh, flowchart or this we need to go through our pseudocode and identify the terminating point for our for loop and that is in line number 14. So the loop will terminate in line number 14. It began in line number 4. All the statements between line number 4 and 14 are part of the repetition that will take place. We go on to line number 5 and it says enter Mac 1 comma Mac 2 comma Mac 3 comma Mac 4. The word enter denotes an input. So the line number five is an input statement and what we are inputting will go into the four variables Mac 1, Mac 2, Mac 3 and Mac 4. Line number six, get the sum. The statement wants us or the program to compute a sum to get an addition of the previously entered variables. The values that were entered for these th four variables are now being added together to get a sum. So here, because we shall have computational calculation that results in get the sum. Get the sum means we add together the values entered for variable Mac1, Mac2, Mac3 and Mac4. And therefore that is a calculation meaning line number 6 is a process. In line number 7, compute average. To compute is to calculate, therefore line number 7 is also a process. The candidate is expected to know how to get an average which is you get the sum divided by the number of terms that were added. Line number eight is average greater than or equal to 50. Now at this point, this sounds uh, like a condition and conditions feature both in loops and in decision control structures. Line number eight is average greater than or equal to 50. Here we are coming across a condition greater than or equal to. Conditions appear both in loops and selection control structures. To differentiate between the two and therefore to identify which one is being used in this instance, we read the next several lines. In line number nine, print pass. Print is a word used to denote output. So we are outputting the word pass. Line number 10 has the word else. Now the word else is part of a selection control structure. It can either be part of the control structure if then else or as part of the control structure nested if. Now in this case after the condition greater than or equal to 50 we have print pass followed by else and then followed by output fail. So we have an output for pass, 
and an output for fail, depending on the condition whether average is greater than or equal to 50. And therefore here we can say we have the if-then-else control structure because we had what to output when the condition is met and after the word else what to output when the condition is not met. And therefore the if-then-else control structure begins from line 8 and ends after line 11. Interestingly, we do not have the usual ending line for the selection control structure, which should have been end if. Again, we do not have the if keyword at the beginning of the control structure, but that is okay because this is not an actual programming language. This is pseudocode. In line 12, average is equal to average plus average. Here again, we meet the equal sign, telling us that this is a process. And as well, as you can see on the right side of this equation, we have an addition operation being undertaken. So here is a process. As well as the next line, count is equal to count plus one. We have an addition operation and then the result being put in the variable count. So this is also a process. Now you notice that the variable count has appeared now for the second time, the third time, I think, the third time. It was first initialized in line number two. Then it was used as the condition in the for loop initialization. And now inside the loop, we have a statement where the value of count is incremented by one. Therefore, this is the statement where the counting variable is being incremented. It is a process. Line number 14, obviously, end for is the termination of our loop. And after that, we have mean score is equal to average slash count. Slash is the arithmetic operator for division. And so we have an arithmetic operation and the result being put in a variable mean score. Therefore, the statement shall be a process. And lastly, we have stop. So having identified that we have a loop, a for loop, and we also have selection, that is if, then, else, we can now go ahead and begin drawing our flowchart. Now let me put both my pseudocode and flowchart in frame so that as we draw, we can refer to our pseudocode. So the first line, which is start, shall be represented by the ellipse for start and inside we shall write start. Next, count is equal to one, is a process. So a rectangle is used. Count is equal to one. I hope this is clear. The third line, average is equal to zero. Now being that it is also a process, I can combine them both in one rectangle. Average is equal to zero. The next line is the beginning of our for loop. So in this case, because for loop is a pretest loop, we will have our diamond symbol containing. In this case, because the for loop is a pretest loop, we have the condition 
preceding the statements. Now our condition should be able to stop the repetition when the value of count is greater than 5. So we can say is count equal less than, sorry, less than or equal to 5, question mark. And in this case, if it is less or equal to 5, we need to continue the repetition. So that is the yes side. And if it is not, that is if it is now greater than 5, we need to exit the loop. When we exit the loop, we come to line number 14 and proceed from there. Allow me to finish up on the exiting of the loop where the next statement after end 4 is mean score is equal to average divided by count, which is a process. I'll represent that with a rectangle and inside it we write the equation mean score is equal to average divided by count and then we stop. Now coming back to the yes side, the first statement in the loop is the input for the four variables mark 1 to mark 4. Input is represented using a parallelogram and we write inside here the word enter and we have mark 1, mark 2, mark 3 and mark 4. The next statement is where we get the sum and we get the sum by adding our four variables. So the addition shall be, because it is a process, shall be put inside of our rectangle where the sum is gotten by Mark 1 plus Mark 2 plus Mark 3 plus Mark 4. After we do the addition, the next statement leads us to compute the average. And the average is found again as a process by dividing the sum so we can say average is equal to sum divided by the number of terms which are four all right next we now encounter our if then else control structure and so we go ahead and do a diamond for the condition where the condition is average greater than or equal to 50 question mark because of space I'm forced to draw smaller and smaller I took some space analyzing the question but I hope you follow and here we have two sides, the no side and the yes side. So for the yes side, we say print pass, which is an output. So that is a parallelogram. We say output pass. And for the no side, we have the statement after else, which is output fail. Hope it is clear. Now, of course, this is where we would have had end if, which now prompts us to join the two sides using a connector. And then the next statement 
is we get the average is equal to average plus average and then count is equal to count plus one because of space i'm going to put them in one rectangle because again they are both processes so in this rectangle i have average is equal to average plus and allow me to elongate my rectangle average plus average and the second one is count is equal to count plus one so at that point we have captured all our statements but one thing which is remaining is that whenever we have a loop there should be an arrow that goes back to the condition if it is a pretest loop and so there must be some arrow going in the opposite direction in the reverse direction now in this case from here because the next line from line 13 is end four this is the point at which the arrow should head in the reverse direction and get us to the condition now i advise candidates not to join the arrow directly to the condition the diamond symbol but to put a connector just before the condition and that is the arrow coming from that process so between the process and the condition i put a connector to which now i can connect my arrow going back now i hope all this is in frame let me put it this way so that we can uh, see yeah that is now in frame so our flowchart starts we have count is equal to one average is equal to zero that is we are initializing the variables and then at this point you can notice that it corresponds to line number four where we had the beginning of the four loop of course we have the condition there what to be done when the condition is met and what is to be done when that condition is not met so these that are done when the condition is met will be repeated as long as the value of count is still less than or equal to five when that value exceeds five then we do the mean score and then we stop i hope that has been clear if there is any question put it in the comments below i'll uh, do my best to read them and respond and we shall do another question in the next video keep revising and all the best